Fox Sports presentation. It's week number 16 in the NFL, and there's nothing so weed about it. It's do or don't do time in pigskin land. Because a loss now, baby, can make your bayou dreams vanish right before your eyes. It's the NFL on Fox. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greenest of them all? Today we see, as the Eagles look to land the Jets by the swamp. Rayman doesn't need to be a road scholar to know he has destiny within his grasp. And with Russian gushing waters and on fire fryer, Mike Philly has all the prime elements for a trip to the show. But yo, Adrian, Philly is Murrow's town. And don't the Jets got that sherbet guy? Yeah, yeah, perfect, whatever. While Keyshawn, he's playing for Gang Green Pie. Because when, when you're, you're a, a jet, jet, you're a jet, jet from, from the first loss you get to your last lousy day. Hey, guess what, Tricky Dick? That last day could be gaining on you. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, now live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood, four guys who know all about playing for dignity. It's a special Saturday on the one and only NFL on Fox. It's week number 16 in the NFL, a crucial week for the 15 teams still fighting it out for the six remaining playoff spots. And we're kicking things off just a little early with this special Saturday edition of the NFL on Fox. Today, it's the Philadelphia Eagles needing victories in the last two weeks to ensure a postseason invite in the Meadowlands today, taking on the New York Jets. And Hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown. Happy to have you alongside with us and welcoming you to the show. And joining me, as always, my partners, Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw. Now, I know your mom, Novice Genoa, will call you handsome, but I have <laughs> never heard anyone call you cute until yesterday when a fan said that Bradshaw is cute. I can top that. I, I'm, I'm traveling around the country doing my many research pieces for Fox <laughs> <laughs> This makes me want to throw up. And I run into a grandmother from Oklahoma, Susie. And Susie, I said I'd say this on the air. She said, that Terry Bradshaw, he is highly intelligent. Highly intelligent. Highly intelligent. Ooh, of course, I'm man, man. I can't hey. believe that. Hey, let it go, man. <laughs> highly intelligent. <laughs> that works for me. Guess who I, hey, guess who I ran into the other day? Where? <laughs> Santa Claus, all you kids out there, get ready. He's, He's coming. He's got a big bag now. of stuff, too, man. He's not coming to Europe. Yes, he is. <laughs> I know he is. As a matter of fact, speaking of Santa Claus, we're going to do a little something involving Santa Claus or some of the byproducts coming up in the show. I know you guys will enjoy it as well. All right, folks, here's a look at what's happening around the NFL. Now, you figured when the 49ers lost to Carolina last Sunday, somebody would pay the price. Apparently, offensive coordinator Mark Tressman is the guy. Tressman, who has been offered the head coaching job at the University of Minnesota, won't be running the 49ers offense next season. Bill Walsh will be involved in the selection process, and one intriguing name is former Walsh disciple Sam Weish. Now, Christmas came early for the Cowboys and their owner, Jerry Jones. The league and Jones settled their NFL properties lawsuits yesterday, with Jones retaining all the millions he earned in marketing deals with Pepsi, Nike, Dr. Pepper, American Express, and AT&T using the Texas Stadium logo. Now, the NFL, as you recall, originally sued Jones for $300 million. And early today, Steelers starting safety Darren Perry was accused of drunken driving by Pennsylvania State Police after being involved in a hit-and-run accident. Perry will be arraigned today and is expected to be released. Now, the Steelers have made no comment as to his playing status for tomorrow's game against the 49ers. Oh, and remember this? John Madden was definitely on the mark last Sunday. He predicted Deion Sanders would be fined for wearing Leon Letts number 78 around his neck and on his wristbands while playing against the Cardinals. Yesterday, the NFL slapped Sanders, Sanders that is, with a $5,000 fine. All right, folks, time now for our Fox Watch, which takes us to the Meadowlands for the upcoming battle between the Eagles and Jets. Dick Stockton and Matt Millen will be calling all the action, and Dick joins us now. Good afternoon, Dick. All right, JB, thank you very much. The Eagles and the Jets, and the weather is inclement, to say the least. We have uh, rain showers, a lot of wind, and it's even colder than the 38 degrees that we show you, and uh, we also will show you behind us a lot of empty seats because there will be oodles of no-shows today. Matt, uh, this game, though, does carry tremendous significance for the Philadelphia Eagles. Eight and six, and in the playoff hunt, they need the game. Well, there's no question that they need the game. They needed it last week, and they went down to Indianapolis, and they really played horrible. 
And so I was curious about that. I went down to practice on Wednesday to watch the Philadelphia Eagles to see just what their mindset was going to be. I got to tell you, that was as intense and tough a practice that I've been around for a long time. How you know what? It reminded me of those Wednesday practices we had with the Raiders, where you just got after each other, you beat each other up, you worried nothing about what was going on. They need this game. Basically, what it all boils down to is if they win these next two games, they're in, regardless of all the other stuff that has to happen. They just have to play. On top of that, playing in today's stadium is going to be awful tough because there's nobody here. And these kind of stadiums and games have a way of kind of lulling you to sleep. They can't do that today. And, of course, you wonder what the Jets have to play for with a record of 1-13. And, and we asked their beleaguered head coach, Rich Kotite, uh, what this particular game against the Eagles today means to him. Well, it's special. You know, we've had a, uh, a poor year, and I think any time you've coached someplace and you have an opportunity to play that team in the regular season, you have a lot of people also in the same boat as I am, uh, coaches, and we have some players. It would be great for the country, and a lot of people don't see the New York Jets, uh, to, to, to come away with a win when no one gives them a chance. So, uh, different impetus for both teams today. Right now, let's send you back to J.B. All right, Dick, thank you very much. And tell Matt that uh, Howie thinks it might be reminiscent of a Villanova-Delaware matchup, huh? We could fit that crowd in Ooh, our stadium. Oh, boy. Hey, look, here, speaking of the Eagles and their difficulties, Terry have lost four out of their last five games, including last week's 37-10 spanking to Indianapolis. What's happened to the Eagles? You know, if you go back and look at their major upset, I think, of the Dallas Cowboys, J.B., and you think to yourself as you observe it, you say, boy, they found the ingredient. It takes good defense to beat Dallas, takes good offense. They got it from their quarterback, Detmer, and Irving Fryer and Waters, all the guys that are having big years. But then they let it dissipate. They lost that edge. They lose close game to Buffalo in the last minute. They lose a close game to the Washington Redskins. And every time a young team use, loses close football games, even after a big victory, they all of a sudden, the confidence slides with it. And the Eagles have lost a lot of their confidence. And they need to get it back. If they're go Even going into the playoff, they need to get that edge back. They can get it back today. The only two teams in the NFL that wear green today, Howie. And I would have to think that the edge that goes to the darker green the Eagles. Yeah, you know, the Eagles. And the funny thing is you can make a case for the Eagles not being as talented a team as the New York Jets. And I think, if anything, Ray Rhodes spoiled us last year with a great coaching performance. And up to this point, he's done a great job with the Eagles also this year. Their secondary hasn't played well, as Matt pointed out. They did not play well in any apps. I talked to William Fuller. He's concerned the Jets throw the ball very quickly. They haven't had a pass rush. Andy Harmon's out. They're making multiple changes in the offensive line. It's difficult to, to really put a finger on what Eagles team will show up today. But, I, you know, as Matt Millen indicated, Ray Rhodes has them barking at one another on Wednesdays and Thursdays. I'm sure this team will be ready to play. It's funny that you say that. They're barking at one another. Opie, Debner, came out, made a statement, uh, tried to get these guys fired up. I'm He's trying to take him. Said that. Oh, I mean, look, he, you can he, take he, him, I can take him. <laughs> Believe me, I can take him. <laughs> Ty Debner had to step up and t take that leadership role. He had to make sure that this team is focused, that they're prepared. And right, he said some things that maybe got the Jets fired up, but he had to take that role. And Ray Rhodes has got to be upset what happened to him in preseason when the Jets came out and blitzed him. So he knows that they're going to blitz him a lot today. Real quickly about Christy the Jets. Christy Jones had a big game in that preseason. Big boy, you mentioned the Jets having some talent, especially offensively. I mean, is there any hope for them, the balance of the way? I think they need to blow it up. I think they need to blow the whole, the whole organization, the whole thing up. You know. Quarterback included. No, I, I mean from a coaching standpoint, from a front office standpoint, bringing a strong GM, strong head coach. Terry, you had a viewpoint on bringing him back to the old Shea yeah, Stadium. Yeah, take him back to Shea Stadium. Get back on Long Island. You don't have a stadium. You don't have a home. Underneath that green bunting is painted red and blue. That's the New York Giants. Bunting. Go back. Get your own bunting. <laughs> Go back and get your own home, yo, my hey, damn. Man, get new practice. uniforms. Get a new coach. Get a whole bunch of hey, stuff. The Oklahoma lady, boy, she's all a bunting. Dissipate. Boy, Hi, man. Lucy. Oh. I did some reading this week. Folks, time now to step aside, but we've got a lot more coming in today's program, including lucid comments from Terry. The Packers and Carolina are fighting for a home field advantage. San Francisco is trying to catch the Panthers. Can Washington turn it around and make the playoffs? Answers next.